fun. Hey, Mortgage Coach Community, Dave Savage. And today is my first interview. Hopefully, I'll get back. I'll get to do another one with Salim Ishmael, Exponential Organizations. How you doing, my friend? Very well, thank you. So, so guys, this book was highly recommended by Jack Daly. I re- interviewed him twice over the past month. And he just, I mean, like the takeaway was this is a must read for every mortgage professional and every loan officer. So Salim, I'd, I'd love to, first of all, this is your first interview in our community, know a little bit about you as the author, and then let's talk about this book and why it's so important to the mortgage industry. Uh, sure. So I come from a computing background, uh, did a bunch of tech entrepreneurship. Uh, for two years, I was the head of innovation at Yahoo, running their incubator. And I learned a really fundamental lesson, which is if you attempt disruptive innovation in a legacy environment, the, the immune system attacks you. Right? Uh, and we're seeing that tension between Uber and the taxis or between Bitcoin and the banks uh, today in sharp relief. Um, and uh, I work a lot now on that. I, I wrote this book a few years ago. So after, Singular, after Yahoo, I, I started this university called Singularity University, uh, which is a think tank looking at very fast moving technologies. So anything from drones to biotech to Bitcoin to autonomous cars. And we noticed that people would come out of there going, oh my God, I get the disruption. What the hell do I do on Monday uh, to deal right. with it? How do I adapt? And the book is essentially a response to that saying, we're seeing a totally new breed of organization being built that we've never seen before. Uh, it's literally eight to 10 years old and they're scaling in a way that we've never seen before. And how do you do it? But more importantly, how do you adapt to it given that's the case? So that's the basic thesis of the book. Love it, love it. And our customers, just so you know you're speaking to, are primarily referral-based local lenders and loan officers. So the loan officers use our technology to provide a more modern experience to the family buying a home or refinancing a home. And then the lenders, you know, integrate it into their tech stack. So that is our people. And I, I know in your book, because I've read it, and by the way, if you are a local mortgage, executive of local mortgage lender, you need to read this, but you've got some key concepts that you see on these, you know, exponential companies, which I think you define it as someone who is 10Xing their peers in their industry. Is that yeah, right? The definition is you're delivering a minimum 10 times better, faster, cheaper than your competitors. And the, yeah. we, what we did was we analyzed the 100 fastest moving companies, the Ubers, the Airbnbs, and we looked at how are they doing it? What are the techniques and mechanisms they're using? And there's three kind of basic tech uh, buckets of uh, characteristics. The first is what I call a massive transformative purpose. Uh, why are you there? This is the Simon Sinek type of approach of saying, what is the purpose of your business and what problem are you really there to solve? Like uh, uh, Google is famous for saying, organize the world's information, right? Ted right. is ideas we're spreading. So that's one component. And all of these fast moving companies have one. The second is five externalities they're using that allow them to keep a really small feature footprint and then scale very rapidly. So um, Uber doesn't hire its own drivers, right? Ted is using community. Uh, Google uses algorithms to scale. Airbnb is leveraging other people's assets, et cetera. And so you're, you're going outside and leveraging community algorithms, the crowd, so that you can scale more quickly than we could in the past. You don't have to have as much assets or workforce to deliver the same thing. And the th- second com- bucket, the third bucket is uh, five internal components that you use to manage your control system and drive culture. So the whole lean startup methodology, the ability and appetite to taking risk, um, uh, real-time dashboards, uh, the whole social uh, uh, construct of using uh, peer-to-peer collaboration tools, et cetera. And, and what we found is if you're a startup, you should be doing all of them. If you're an existing company, if you implement four of those 10 fully, you get a 10x improvement in your organization. Love, love that. And, and by the way, folks, if you're a loan officer, there are things that you could look at your practice that you control that you could implement to outperform your competitors. And if you're a sweet, sweet mortgage executive, I really do believe that, you know, by 2020, most of the, you know, call it the innovative lenders playing to win, to thrive. They'll have put this digital front end and the ones that are, that are most successful will basically have the best adoption of that technology. They will, you know, have executed four of the 10 concepts within exponential organization. Um, 
you know, if you don't mind sharing some of your perspectives on time horizons, because, you know, like how fast is this coming? And if you're talking to the more, you know, leaders of the mortgage industry and mortgage professionals, you know, what are some time horizons that they need to be paying attention to? And, and what do you think our industry should be concerned about? So let me give you a little bit of theory and then some projections based on the theory, right? Um, Ray Kurzweil, uh, who is the founder of this exponential thinking, basically noticed that Moore's law, the doubling pattern every 18 months that we see in computation, we're now seeing that in a dozen technologies. Uh, drones, 3D printers, neuroscience. Uh, drones, for example, are doubling in their capability every nine months, uh, on, uh, blockchain, etc. And we've never seen this before. And you notice that once you turn something into an information-based paradigm, its growth accelerates from a linear incremental pattern to an exponential pattern. And so uh, mobile phones have grown exponentially, bandwidth, storage, uh, et cetera, et cetera, computing power, obviously. And so all of these dynamics are moving. So just as a very small example, the LIDAR unit that drives autonomous cars, light radar that they use to scan at the top of the Google car, uh, six years ago, that cost $75,000. And today you can get that for $50. Okay, because there's three technologies in there. Each of them is doubling. The aggregate effect is totally profound. And so we're seeing an unbelievable, unprecedented drop in the cost of technology, meaning it can be applied that many places. Uh, using AI and computation and um, behavioral economics is probably the areas where we'll see it most in your world. Uh, but I think the macro effects of what's happening in the, in the, in the global stage, I think will actually affect uh, your world pretty profoundly. Just for example, I'll give you some predictions. These are my personal predictions, by the way. I predict that within five years, we will not be buying combustion engine cars uh, because it's all going to go battery electric powered. Um, uh, within eight years, we will not be buying cars at all um, because we're turning transportation into a service. And what we've noticed is once you, we predicted that once you have about a 20% penetration of autonomous cars, we'll see an increase in traffic capacity of about 10 to 15 times. Now, when it's 10 to 15 times easier to get into a city, what happens to real estate, which spikes in the middle of every big city globally because it's so hard to get in and out, right? All of a sudden, the suburbs light up very interestingly, okay? So I think there's a couple of clear dynamics there. On one level, everybody wants to move into the city to be in close proximity with other people. On the other hand, the cost will be way cheaper and it'll be easier to get in and out and therefore easier to live further out. And so we're going to see competing tensions around this, but pay attention to these trends uh, because it happens much more quickly than people predict or think. Uh, already there's a small city of about 130,000 people in Florida outside Orlando that's automating all the transportation. They're going to have autonomous cars across those little town, um, which will profoundly change the dynamic because our whole society is based on geographic proximity retail store locations, bank locations, voting districts, school districts, the whole thing. I think the second big thing I would notice is that the younger generation, and I'm sure your folks are tracking this, is not interested in owning. Uh, they'd much rather just live somewhere in an interesting place and rent. And I think that would cha drive changes in the mortgage industry pretty profoundly. Yeah, no, no doubt. By the way, if you have predictions, if you have questions, please put those down below in chat. Also, I want to make sure that anybody that's listening to this, we, we talked, you mentioned Simon Sinek. I interviewed Simon for the mortgage industry. I'm going to put a link down below. So he talked all about the power of why and really spoke to you as the industry. Also, I, I spoke earlier this year to Steve Brown, who was the former chief futurist for Intel. And he said some of the very same things you did. He talked about Moore's Law. You know, we, he, he literally laid a path for the mortgage industry. Check out a link down below for that. Super powerful interview. Um, so, so let's talk about this. And I, I'm sure you've had this question before, but, you know, lenders and companies, they need to have better technology. They need to adapt four out of 10 of the things that you talk about. But getting your sales force, you know, to operate and execute and implement the technology of the company, do you have any... Any thoughts or ideas, whether it's feedback to the, to the C-suite on how to implement technology in a way that's more successful or any advice to a sales force that, hey, you're working for a company, you want them to be successful, you need to implement and execute technology if you want to outperform your competition. 
Uh, I think uh, clearly there's some areas where you could focus and get a huge competitive edge. Uh, the use of AI to scan, you know, uh, home sales and kind of do predictive analytics on which suburbs will will increase in value or not would be an easy place to, to go. Uh, it should be very easy to look at historical data and train a machine learning algorithm as to where you're going to see the biggest pop uh, if you make an investment somewhere uh, and buy a mortgage or something in one place or versus another. I think that's kind of some obvious ones in term, as opposed to on top of say automating the basic process, right? Doing credit checks more effectively. Well, and using your CRM, like using your yep. CRM or or using like at Mortgage Coach, we have a mobile app that helps a loan officer deliver better advice. And yep. some loan officers implement it really effectively, some don't, but they're not gonna 10X their competition if they don't. I think it, it, but I think of that as, as a zero sum game, right? Because if you're not doing it, your competitors are, so you'd better do it. And the overall playing field increases, but stays roughly level. I think where I would give, deliver a huge edge is in understanding some of these really big uh, technology injections. For example, what happens when you put solar powered uh, roof tiles and you can drop your cost of electricity by a huge amount? Or do you want a Tesla Powerwall uh, because you're gonna be able to change all your backup systems and actually deliver util energy back to the grid? Um, uh, there's some uh, technology breakthroughs that are coming around owning a home that I think are gonna be very, very profound that will actually, I think, drive home ownership higher because it'll be much easier to, to deal with. Um, for example, there's a, now an Uber for home maintenance, right? If, you're, if you own a home, there's a, it's a nightmare trying to keep track of all of the serial numbers and warranties. And there's now a service that does that and actually literally charges you nothing. And I would partner with those folks so that when a homeowner uh, buys a home, they have an ongoing service. I would start looking at subscription models where you say, listen, you're buying the home, but why don't you pay us a subscription fee and we'll maintain and monitor the whole thing for you ongoing. Now you start to create new revenue streams that are recurring revenue on top of other, just to say the unit transaction that's happening. And I think we'll start to see completely new business models emerging out of what's coming. Fascinating, fascinating. So good community, let's get smart together, share your ideas, share your questions down below. So one, one last thing, you know, so when I look at the job of a mortgage professional, there's lead development, like bring in the business, marketing, there's conversion, call it advice, being an advisor, because let's face it, if you're not a trusted advisor who's really delivering right. an obvious value, yeah. that's going to get done online, you know, by a, a technology company that does mortgages. If there's not tangible advice, there's transaction, and I personally think between AI, big data, and all of the automations coming, that transaction piece is just going to get more and more automated, less and less. Totally agree. Loan officer. And then there's this client for life. Like, hey, I built a relationship. I'm managing this relationship. And so my advice, and tell me if you align on this, if, if you're spending most of your time doing transaction and that's how you see your value, right. literally your job is at risk. You yeah, need that will to monetize pretty quickly. Yeah, you need to be lead developer, marketer, yeah. personal brand. You need to be obvious value coach, mortgage coach. Yeah. Transactions going to get more automated. Make sure that you use the technology to do it. And then look at how can I be that lender for life? What services can I provide so that they'll come back to me for transactions? You align with that philosophy? 100%. And I really like the way you frame it because if you can be the – the trusted advisor and know how to advise on what's happening with home values and what features you should have in the house. And then that, that the front end will help dictate the back end because if they're trusting you heavily, when they buy their next home, they're going to be coming to you, right? When they want to sell the house, they're going to come back to you. And I think the key, this is where I go back. There's so much change coming that understanding the technology around the home uh, if nothing else, the connected home and what devices to use. Ask any single vendor what connected home uh, uh, platform should they be using, and they have no idea. So the more right. advice you can give them on how to manage that, the infinitely more loyal that customer is going to be to you going forward. And it's pretty easy now to come up with, to understand that and keep abreast of that. You just have to know where to go. And if you, uh, so I would spend a lot of time on the understanding the, what they're buying, 
uh, and the t new technologies that will allow home automation in different ways uh, that will really add value to that homeowner going forward. No, no doubt. And so you're on this call, you're a mortgage professional, or maybe you're a friend, a realtor, but I think that's a big takeaway for agents. You know, how can real estate agents um, stay connected and stay in front of that client and help them with their automation strategies? By the way, what are your thoughts on the real estate space? You know, just realtors as a whole, a decade from now or five I, years I, from now, any I, opinions? I think there's, I think I have two kind of availing points. I think at one level, the transactional aspect, as you said, gets totally automated and becomes a commodity. And it will be impossible to compete in that space if that's all you're doing. On the other hand, the uncertainty around buying a home uh, will become so much greater because there's going to be massive changes in, in our world on an ongoing basis that they will need the trusted advisor even more. Uh, and therefore the advisor, if they can kind of really stay abreast of the macro and economic changes coming and the technology changes coming, they're in a better place to give guidance because it's, it's, there's, no, there's no way we're going to be buying homes online like you could be buying cars online. It's too personal. You have to go get out there. Uh, you have to go visit the houses. It has, there's that chemistry that you feel with the house that you decide to buy it or not. And that will be where the human element can't be replaced easily by technology. And that's where I think the, the, the mortgage lender, mortgage advisor, brokers can really add the most value. Yeah, I love, I love this conversation. So, so by the way, you know, we're a change agent in this space. We believe that loan officers should be not just talking about rates and fees and transactions, but hey, family, what are your hopes and dreams? And now let me paint a picture of how you can achieve your hopes and dreams. We call it a total cost analysis with this, you know, mobile app that tells your story. Yeah. And, and one of the big challenges at the C-suite is getting their sales force to go, you know what, I got to use my CRM. I got to use mortgage coach. I got to use this tech. So I know that after watching this, there's going to be some CEOs that would love to have you at their next sales rally or, or some, you know, industry players in our space that would love to have you come and scare us a little bit. Like change is happening fast, but hey, if you use this technology, you can win. So how would someone reach out to you and either hire you uh, to come speak or someone that's part of your organization or your university? Sure. Um, if you go look up salimismail.com, uh, which is my website, you'll see uh, videos of me speaking. Uh, I, I uh, kind of speak anywhere from the Vatican to the UN to industry organizations to schools. Uh, the message is kind of somewhat... Uh, consistent. We have massive technology breakthroughs coming and the implications for us is going to be very, very profound. Um, and let me give you a, a specific suggestion. You know, when you, when people are buying a home, they're really looking for two or three key buckets of understanding in the local area, education, healthcare, uh, local services, uh, and then the value, et cetera, et cetera. And I think if your folks become really uh, practiced and can deliver a lot of value into one of the powerful schools that are coming along nearby, what are the best school, but what are the best healthcare delivery mechanisms in the nearby neighborhoods or compared to the overall community or different neighborhoods in a city, they can add a huge amount of value to that purchasing decision, right? And, and then Absolutely. it lifts off past just the transactional thing and you become the trusted advisor for that family. No, that no, no doubt. They'll, although if you stay on the transactional side to your earlier point, you're in, you're in big trouble. So we do a lot of guidance on, okay, when will autonomous cars hit and what will be the actual uh, implications, right? Um, and and how, how long, when do you make an investment in something like that? Uh, when do you need to watch out for when your home might get uh, disrupted? The value may get disrupted because of that type of breakthrough coming along. And so we look a lot of, about that and we, ha we have kind of a range of speakers that talks from anything from that paradigm to what happens to financial services, for example, or to what happens to various industries in that space. Got it. And so just go to your website, sign up. That's the best way to connect with you. I'm going to put a link down below. So you're watching this on YouTube, link down below. If you got a takeaway, give us a like, uh, share this with your mortgage friends, share this with your executive team. I know I believe with all my heart that technology will not eliminate loan officers, but loan officers and mortgage professionals that leverage technology, that master technology, will absolutely crush mortgage professionals that don't. I mean, 
Any, anything you have to say as we wrap this up and any last words or any quotes from you? Yeah, just one. I mean, you take uh, um, you know, financial advisors, which are closely connected to the mortgage broker. Absolutely. Um, there's a company called 49 Financial, which has popped up, which is a true EXO. And they're literally going 10x per year uh, better than their competitors. So they're, they're literally growing 10x every two years, I think. And they've been doing this for six years by applying the techniques in the book. And so there's a real valid live case study in kind of very close to this world of how you can apply these techniques. And I think if you're not applying them, everybody else is over time. Yeah, now they're super smart. And by the way, everybody, how much do you love that? One of my takeaways is raise the bar. I mean, hey, improving 10%, 20%, doubling is great. But think outside the box, 10x. How are you going to 10x your success? And just that, that paradigm itself, I think, is a great takeaway from today's interview. My friend, it's great to meet you for the first time. Hopefully, we meet in person. And uh, I look forward to having you in our community again. Great. Great to have been here. Great discussion. Yeah, no, no doubt. Really appreciate it.